For anyone who hasn't heard of the heroine's journey, can you just explain how it differs from the hero's journey and also what with the, the, the words? And also, why is it important to know the difference between the two? All right. So uh, most people are familiar with the hero's journey because of Joseph Campbell. And also there's, you know, kind of memes and images of it out there. And generally speaking, we sort of have the hero's journey, if not taught to us, at least eventually you kind of pick it up or encounter it. Just, um, you know, if you're a sci-fi writer within the convention circuit or something like that. Um, And so I talk about the hero's journey first because most of the time it's the one people have uh, access to and the language to talk about. Essentially, it's basically this idea that um, a hero has a quest, um, has these sort of patterns of withdrawal and return where he goes into a liminal space. And I'm using pronouns uh, casually, so I'll get to that in a second. (laughs) But um, so he crosses a threshold, he retrieves a boon, he takes it back. He's presented with an award, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can just Google and take a look of it at any image of the hero's journey out there. And it will give you the sort of circular layout of this journey. Um, you'll be very familiar with the hero's journey because you will have encountered it in like most sort of suspense thrillers, like all the 007 movies, for example, would be hero's journeys, that kind of thing. So there's these sort of quests for autonomy in a way, the hero's journey. The hero always ends up kind of going at it alone. It's usually him against the universe. He has to prove himself, either to himself or to others, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it has all of these um, also sort of messages and narrative tropes and archetypes that are associated with it. And then there's the heroine's journey. So the first and most important thing to know is that these narratives are referred to using gendered language, but they aren't gendered. So a female or non-binary person can be a hero. And the example that I often use is the recent Wonder Woman movie. She is a very classic hero. If you've seen that movie, she undertakes all of the steps and beats of a heroic narrative. Um, And similarly, heroines can be male identified or non-binary individuals as well. So um, the actual biological sex of the main character does not make a difference in which kind of narrative we're on when we're talking about these. So I just want to make that kind of clear. Um, It's just that the language we have to refer to these two narratives was kind of dictated by Campbell back in the 60s and 70s. And so that's just how it's fallen out at this juncture. So a heroine's journey is is not necessarily the opposite, um, but what the heroine wants and the goals that she sets for herself are just completely different from the hero. And there's no like a priori value as to one journey being better or worse than the other one. It's just as readers and as writers, we often gravitate to one instead of the other, especially in the Western world. So uh, a heroine's journey is, generally speaking, she has something that is taken from her, and it's usually a family network or emotional tie or bond of some kind. So um, the example that I use often is Persephone being taken from Demeter. So then Demeter is started on a heroine's journey because she is questing for her daughter. And that's that's kind of what the heroine is usually doing. The heroine is usually questing for some kind of reunion or unity or cohesion of some kind. She's looking to put something back together again that was broken or that she's looking to find something that was taken. Um, And her journey is is similar in that she has a descent. She has a, she crosses a threshold. She disguises herself usually. And then she has all of these patterns, much like the hero does. Um, But her goal and strength is almost always in accessing information and communicating with people. So a heroine on her journey is always seeking to talk to people, to get in contact with people, to put a group together, to put a group quest together. Um, I like to say that heroines make very good generals. They're usually really good at identifying the strengths and weaknesses in others and activating them. Heroines are very good at asking for help. And that's not a weakness, it's strength because of this personality quality where they're really good at, at knowing what's needed to accomplish things together. And the end of the heroine's journey is almost always a compromise of some kind that is for the good, uh, for the greater good, for the great good of mankind. In the case of like the ancient Greek myths, uh, Demeter's compromise results in the seasons, which allow for the harvest, et cetera. Um, and so that's kind of sort of the core of these, these two narratives. 